Hi folks, John Dunn here, RPG freelancer, publisher behind Meliorvia. I'm up here tonight at Immortals with Mikey. What is up, John? What is up, world? We are here today to talk about what? We are here to talk some Cthulhu. Because Ooh, I don't think while. we may have gone three, four weeks without talking Which Cthulhu. is like a world record. <laughs> Carlos picked up this campaign, A Time to Harvest, for the store. So we've got some copies in. And I want to talk a little bit about it. This is a pretty neat kind of getting started campaign really yeah if you're new to call cthulhu and uh there are a few people out there who are looking into new game systems and new styles of play this might be a cool jumping off point so this was written by brian sammons and charles zaglanis and my apologies if i mangled your name they both have quite a few different credits in call of cthulhu work and this is a campaign not a real long one but a solid starting off point that initially came out in 2016. It was kind of an organized play campaign, kind of in the same style as the Adventure League stuff from D&D. Oh, yeah. So and, like, is it like more one-shot stuff, or is it just like... Well, this was actually a six-episode campaign. Okay. So Adventure League runs for, I think, years, uh, or at least a year per cycle. This was just a, six episodes that I think they released roughly monthly. It was intended, again, like I said, as an intro campaign. And the neat thing about this guy is it actually has pre-generated characters. You don't have to use them, but there's this whole handout section in the back. And in a, right before those handouts, you've got a whole bunch of different pre-generated characters with illustrations and some backstory and things like that. So it's a real handy jumping off point if you want to introduce people and say you don't want to use the stuff that's in the starter set this with the core rule book would be a real solid building point uh it came out in june of 22 probably going to run you somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 18 sessions to play through and there is a pdf of the handouts and the pre-generated characters that is available on chaosium's site so if you just want to download that instead of ripping stuff out of your book you can do that it's set initially in august of 1930 all the PCs are students at Miskatonic University. And there is an expedition sponsored by the anthropology and geology departments to go check out an area of Vermont called Cobb's Corners. This is kind of the breadbasket of Vermont. There's a lot of farming going on there. And there's a small town, Cobb's Corners, which is set up like a sandbox. So the PCs have a chance to interact with a lot of the local residents and learn what's going on there. And this expedition is a follow-up to a previous expedition that took place in August of 1929, when three students died horribly. Wow, why would you even want to do that, you know? Well, because they were studying important things, right? Yeah. And we want to know what happened to them. So your investigators, in addition to trying to do some geology and archaeology and anthropology research, well, they're also trying to find out what happened to these missing students. And this is Vermont. This is, you know, New England. This is the heart of Lovecraft country where you have old families and ancient mysteries. And it really just sets the tone perfectly for an introduction to the mythos and to the gameplay of Call of Cthulhu. Going further than that, we get into spoilers. So if you're interested in playing, you probably want to stop watching the video now. Stop it. If you're interested, though, in running it or finding out more, pay attention. So this adventure is very much a spin-off of one of Lovecraft's uh, short stories called The Whisperer in Darkness. The Mego are the primary villains. Do you remember the Mego, Mikey? Have we talked about them before? I don't know. So the Mego are the fungi, fungi from Yuggoth. Okay. Sound Yuggoth like fungi. is Pluto. And so the Mego are basically these shape-shifting-ish sapient bug fungus things with lots of sparkling glowing eyes and they communicate by whispering sibilant tones which is why the whisperer in the darkness right doesn't sound pleasant and they kind of inspire a cult to shub niggeroth who is one of the big bads in the cthulhu universe over the course of the six adventures that are in this book it's they're very much progression in the first one the characters get a chance to explore Cobb's corners in vermont meet the other students meet the faculty meet the locals and well there's a gate to the dreamlands that pops open from the bodies of one of the students who died previous summer 
and there's an opportunity for Migo to abduct and replace some of the other students. So yeah, there's bad things happening and the players have an opportunity, their characters rather, have an opportunity to be introduced to these very bad things that are happening. Uh, the next episode, one of the students has had their brain removed and replaced by Amigo, who's basically controlling it, and comes back and explores the Miskatonic University campus. So the player characters get to kind of interact and try and figure out what this possessed student is doing on the campus. And this also gives them an opportunity to interact back with a lot of the other NPCs that are at the college and the town around it. Uh, episode three, the characters gain a benefactor. And this is another way of just kind of setting things up that isn't always common in Call of Cthulhu Adventures where you've got this organization that appears to be backing them and helping them out and providing them with resources as they investigate the mythos. And because this organization is aware of the mythos. But things go slightly off the rails showing the characters that maybe this benefactor doesn't know as much about what's going on as he lets on or seems to think he knows and introduces a really cool side trek adventure where the characters can go off to Canada. Uh, and even if you don't run the rest of the campaign, that side trek could make a really solid one shot adventure just to introduce people to Call of Cthulhu all by itself. Uh, in episode four, Characters come back to Cobb's Corners, but now they've got a lot more firepower, both in the terms of physical and in the terms of the knowledge that they were able to pick up uh, in their interactions with their benefactor. And of course, because it's a Cthulhu adventure, when they get back to Cobb's Corners, things go horribly wrong because they have to fight Migo soldiers and a dark young of Shubnigara. Do you know what that is? Well, Migo soldiers, I know um, I wouldn't really want to deal with those. But no, no, you wouldn't. But the Dark Young of Shugnigaroth is basically a giant tree monster. Okay, so like yeah. uh, Groot on steroids? Kinda, yeah. Uh, and because it's Shugnigaroth, it has longings. And we'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, pleasant. Yeah. Anyway. Not something you want to see on the daily. No. Episode five, after they escape the Migo, they encounter cultists who are based in Cobb's Corners, who are sacrificing the entire town. And they're trying to trigger a rather intense outer god manifestation. And at this point, the players have the opportunity to basically play huge heroes if they manage to stop this manifestation and stop this invasion. Uh, in episode six, there is a kind of a pulpy follow-on adventure to destroy a Migo base on the moon. Okay. Yeah, so things escalate rather rapidly at that point. Uh, after that, maybe these characters aren't a real good fit for continuing adventures, assuming they survived and didn't go insane. But it is kind of a neat adventure that just introduces players to the way Cthulhu can go, shows some of the offers an opportunity for both very realistic and very pulpy game style, and can show that sharp contrast between those initial adventures where you're just kind of interacting with people and getting to see how this slice of Americana in the 1930 was compared to, oh, look, we're on the moon fighting cultists. Yeah, pretty big jump if you ask me. Yep. There is an epilogue after that with some spin-off adventure ideas and some other adventure hooks that you could easily tie into all of this. There's an awful lot of material here. Like I said, this is probably 12 to 18 game sessions of play. Uh, and you could use your own characters or you could use the pre-gens. There's some really solid ideas in here. Great content. I think, like I said, 48 pages of handouts. And this is really nicely illustrated throughout. You've got some solid maps. It's a well put together book. This is a 330 30 odd page hardcover from Chaosium. It is full color and it is $49.99 up here on the shelf at Immortals. Stop by, take a look or hit immortalsinc.com and uh, it's available there through the shop too. It is waiting for you. Well said, my friend. Take care. Till next time. Good gaming, folks.